an existence in Oklahoma and it was very, very tough because if you've ever been to Oklahoma, there's, there's nothing there. It's now mountains, hills. It's just really, really flat. So, but guess what? They persevered. My ancestors persevered. And because of that, I'm here. And because of that, I have children and grandchildren. So that the story goes down and now it's starting to, um, to, to go up. So that's a little bit about me. But today, Hi, Auntie, we yeah. missed some of the recording. Can you explain um, how Nebraska got its name again? Okay. Uh, the state of Nebraska, the word Nebraska, it comes from an Oto Missouri word. And Oto Missouri is the tribe that uh, is the Native American tribe that uh, my ancestors come from. And they, uh, the, their uh, traditional homelands. Their traditional Kulaivi is in the middle of America in Nebraska, and it's it comes from the, uh, the Oto word Nebraga, and so from that they decided to name the uh, the state Nebraska. And most of the states in the United States come from a Native American uh, word. You can look that up too, because they they you can you can find out where they are. Iowa, there's an Iowa tribe. Missouri, there's a Missouri tribe. So all of, all of those words were at once Native American words and they named the states after that. So there's your fun fact for the day. But today, well, Auntie Steffi's going to start with the, um, the uh, share, share the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Presentation. There you go. Blah. Do you ever get where you can't talk? Your tongue gets kind of, you know, whatever. Okay. All right, so on Monday, we started talking about water as being the, the water is, is, is life, the beginning of life. You talked about biodiversity. We went out in our yards, we, we checked out. I didn't check on that, but you found things in your yard. So your yard is very healthy and diverse. Um, and, and we took a look at some word art. Then on Tuesday, we talked about interdependence, how we, we have relationships with each other, not only with our friends, but we, do we have relationships with plants? Yes. Animals? Yes. And we do have, you, we, you take care of the plants and the plants in like in some of the stories promise to take care of humans. And so same with the animals like salmon boy, you take care of the salmon, the salmon will return and they will take care of you. So we talked about that interdependence. So today we're going to shift, we're going to keep going on this interdependence part and thinking about how we work together with, um, I just made this up. We have the land, Aina, plus your family, Ohana, and oh, it equals Mea'ai, which is food. And one of the big three questions was how food impacts or influences our Hawaiian identity or your, your cultural identity from um, the, the cultures that you identify with. So today, I think we're going to watch two uh, videos and discuss about cultural values in Kalo. And we're going, to, we're going to take a look at a lot of food pictures. And I hope that you'll be drooling because I, I had a good time picking some really good ones that look really juicy and interesting that we want to eat. And we're going to share out our favorite Hawaiian foods. And then we'll be done for, for my part, we'll be done. But remember, you're going to keep sketching. You can sketch today after you see something. Uh, doodle, uh, paint while you're even, if you can be painting, you can be writing those one words. You can see that um, Mamo was writing one words going around in a circle. Uh, you can think about stuff like Nicholas was thinking, he had some thoughts, and then you can reflect on things. So, so let's go ahead and get started with the first video called Kalo, which is uh, the uh, uh, another word people use for Kalo is taro. So. Take it away. Aina means land. Ground. Dirt. Kalo, Colocasia esculenta, extremely important food crop that was bought, brought to Hawaii by our Kupuna, our Polynesian ancestors here to Hawaii. One of 30 crops, uh, probably one of the most important crops because it is a staple food of Hawaii. Um, some of its health benefits are number one, it's a complex carbohydrate, uh, it's gluten free, uh, and it's, um, you know, what I kind of consider um, the, the Hawaiian probiotic, as 
as poise starts to ferment, it's probably one of the best things you could have for your digestive system, which is why our kupuna would feed um, poi from, as one of the first foods for our, our, our babies. Minds believe that, that Kalo was our elder brother, which is why I believe and many believe that Kalo was uh, grown to the extensive amount that it has been because it was, um, we needed to care for our, 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 our elder brother, who was Halo and Akalao Kapalili, who basically gave his life so that we could live. And if it really weren't for Kalo, I truly believe that, that no Hawaiians would have continued to, to be able to survive in Hawaii without this food crop. Uh, what we have here is our mana ulu, and we'll probably blend it with a variety of wetland and dryland. So everyone gets to taste all the different flavors of Kalo. Mana ulu is a yellow variety, and then the other variety that we'll be featuring is our lehua, which is the purple variety. And we'll be doing a pa'ei, um, traditional and non-traditional. But for that day, I'll be featuring it with our local tomatoes that we grow on the farm, uh, heirloom variety, Roma, a few um, green zebras. So you get to taste the different acidity. So it'll be sweet and savory dish, along with our big island mushrooms, which um, will be featured as my meat uh, to give you the significance of he'ea. Our taco. We're going to be doing uh, like a deconstructed lao lao. Uh, the part of the plant I'm using for the, um, the kalo is the leaf. And we're going to puree it um, kind of like a squid luau style, so a coconut milk as well. Uh, and then puree that. And I'm going to uh, serve it with a kiave uh, sugarcane smoked pork. And uh, prior to Western contact, there were over 400 varieties of kalo. 400 varieties of Hawaiian uh, heirloom, heirloom varieties or cultivars, which we sometimes refer to it. So uh, today in 2014, roughly about 84, 85 varieties. It's important to buy locally and grow locally because farmers like us at Simply Fresh Farms depend on you, our community, to sustain our living and also sustain the community. Um, growing locally grown is, is coming fresh to you by the minute, by the hour, not by the days. So remember, when you buy produce, think of us first. Buy local, and if you see us around, and please tag us at Simply Fresh. And uh, we just want to branch out and reach out to all the farmers out there that we are here to sustain the island of Hawaii um, through natural and organic methods as much as possible uh, to give you the benefits of our, truly our medicine is our food. Okay, if everyone could turn on their camera so you can see each other when we have a conversation, that'd be really nice. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, so, all right, talked a little bit about Kahlo. We saw three gentlemen come on and talk about it. One gave us a little history. The second one was holding, holding the Kahlo in his hand and, and that's what they pound for the poi. Look how big that was. And, uh, and then the third man was, uh, a, sounded like a chef, right? He was gonna make it, he was gonna put coconut milk in it. He was gonna make a, a kind of a luau. Um, I don't like that so much, but I'll eat it, but I won't like it as much. So, um, so I thought that was real interesting. How many of you saw what was written, the guy that was wearing the green, green t-shirt? What, what, what did he have written on his shirt? Anybody wanna just kind of call that out? Just unmute and just say it. No panic, go organic. No panic, go organic. What a great phrase if you want to write that down. You know, no panic, go organic, in other words. Uh, in other words, stay away from processed foods. You know, I love a good Dorito now and then, but you know, I'm trying to cut down. So no panic, go organic. You can, I thought that was a really clever way of using words. That'd be a great word art to, to, to put up, so. Um, anybody would like to say something that they heard that they didn't know anything about before, but it, they maybe there was a phrase that was said that you thought, well, I never thought of that before, and then I'll share what I did. Okay, uh, is it Mia? Mia? No, Lani. Okay. No, Lani. No, Lani, then we'll go with Mema. Well, I didn't know that there were 
like there used to be over 400 varieties. Yeah, I wrote that down too, 400 varieties. I kind of even drew a little calo leaf because I do want you to practice sketching the calo leaf, which is actually an easy shape because it's, um, it's a heart. It's got the pico in the middle and it has all the little veins going out. So you're right, Noelani. I actually wrote that down too, 400 varieties. That's, that's a fact. And, and I wrote no panic, go organic too. So I like that. Thank you, thank you, Noelani. Okay, Mema? Mine was the same as Noelani's. <laughs> why, did you, why did you say that though? Why did you? Uh... You know, growing up making lao lao so far, I've only seen one type of kalo, but in the video it had, the leaf was actually purple, but right. I've only grew up making lao lao with it being green. Right. Right, so there's a lot of variety. I've never eaten the purple one. Have you, Auntie Steffi or Auntie Lei, ever ate purple kalo before? Yeah, uh, yeah, the purple kalo is ono. There you go. Kalo, yes, yes. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay, anybody else have something they, they heard there? Did you hear him talk about uh, our, how food is medicine? Have you ever thought about that? Native Americans really believe food is medicine. It's a yeah. Go ahead, Sophia. Um, when I, I started thinking about that, and then he said um, it's like a Hawaiian probiotic. And um, I just thought that was really cool because they are talking about how it's a staple food and Very also how it's a carbohydrate. And oh, yeah. Right. Like you said, you have it get a little sour. My mother liked it really, really sour to where I couldn't even stand the smell. And she would just think it was delicious because I would like my poi real fresh. And then she would say, okay, put some aside for me. And she, we, we would make it, uh, she would make it sour. So, um, and it's a good probe. It's supposed to be the healthiest is when it gets that sour. How many of you like kimchi? Oh, that's a great probiotic too. Adding it to your food on the side. Any pickle vegetables, anything that's kind of pickly. How many of you like pickles? Oh my God, I love pickles. Um, you know, pickles on the side too, that vinegary stuff. And uh, how many of you like adobo? Like chicken adobo, pork adobo, oh man, love it. And that, that, that is also a great food to, as you use a vinegar is a really great uh, help for food. Um, yeah, so food is medicine, you know, that's what they, uh, you know, how what they used to say, the doctor says, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That, that kind of idea, if you eat healthy food, you will remain healthy and, and, and try to uh, avoid any kind of illnesses or whatever. Okay, anybody? Okay, Nicholas, you have a comment? I have a question. Yeah. I don't understand, like, why is vinegar like a probiotic? Like, like why? Like, is it because, like, or vinegar, like, if it's spicy, like kimchi, like, why is it a probiotic? I was a little confused. Like, is it just like because of the plant or like what it's put in? Like, <laughs> partly, partly, I think kimchi is a cabbage and it's got a, that has the ability to uh, get into your, your gut and keep the good, good, good stuff in there to eat up your food. Stephanie, you're the science teacher. I might may not be able to explain it more. Can you explain how when the food gets into their guts? Or maybe? Uh, yeah, it basically has to do with like, well, part of it's the fermentation, right? Because a lot of those things are fermented. And so what it does is there's like bacteria, but it's like good bacteria, right? And so when that bacteria goes into your gut, that's why they call it probiotics, right? Because when you're sick and you have bacteria, they give you antibiotics, right? To get rid of the living things. Whereas probiotics uh, promotes like the good, the good bacteria that's in there to like help your body function better. It's all about guts, guts, huh? Um, okay. Like kombucha, Sophia, yes. Yep, like kombucha, yep. You know, I've never had kombucha. Is it coffee or is it, what is it? Is it fruit? Vegetable? It's like tea, isn't it? Yeah, it's tea. It's like tea. They turn it into like tea. Okay. All right. Ah, you, can, okay. you can make some alcohol too. So I heard. Ooh. <laughs> Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, um, so let's go on to the next picture because when I saw it, I went, oh my God, you guys got to see this picture. Auntie Steffi, go. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh wait, the video or the, the slideshow? 
the slideshow. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm going to skip that second video there. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Then, yeah. I'm sorry. Lay and I were tag, Lay and I were tagging. Nope. We were just tag teaming because apparently my video is not working out. But there we go. Uh, okay. Up to the foods. Second, second one. The second oh, video. The taller okay. one. Yep. Yeah. That one. Yeah. What mm -hmm. do you see? What stands out to you? Hollow yeah. and a, um, like an uncle. <laughs> Very big. Uh huh. How big do you think the leaves are? I can do a little estimate using the uncle as a as a probably an idea of how you know he could be about. Let's just say he's six feet tall. He probably is about maybe not, but six feet tall. But how tall do you think those callos are then? Anyone want to take an estimate? Five or six feet. <laughs> six feet. Give me a number. Come on. Take, Ten take feet. About maybe 10 feet. 40. Um, That's about as tall as most of your ceilings. If you live in a really normal house room, the ceilings go to about 10 feet, maybe 12 feet. So you're looking at this collo in your house would just fill up your room totally, totally. So, you know, if you're going to make a lao lao, uh, Mema, you would just need one leaf here. Just one leaf and really wrap it up. You know, up in the mainland, we have the smaller leaves. We got to add a couple more leaves in there. But when we would make lao lao at my grandmother's house, they would have these big leaves. And we would we would walk around with the leaf and all the adults would put all the stuff in and then we'd wrap it up. It was a really fun family thing. So if you could ask this uncle, that's a good, I should have put that. If you could ask this uncle a question, what do you think, what would it be? Somebody, somebody, I can't see everyone, but maybe. Um, How? Uh, what would you say? What was your? What would be your question? Oh, great hide and seek, said somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how long did it take for it to grow this big? You might ask him how long it would take to grow this big. You might be surprised at how quick it kind of happens. Yeah, how long did it take to plant all of it? He looks kind of happy. I wonder why he's happy. How much water or like sunlight it needs to take? Right. right. And Liam says, what's your secret? <laughs> what methods did he use to make them so healthy? Yeah, what method, maybe what fertilizer, yeah. So much mud, yep. You know, I don't know if this is, Lay, do you think this is dry land or do you think it's, it's probably- Oh no, this, this is wetland terrain. Wet, only, only wetland terrain can get this big. Okay, wetland, yeah. okay. Okay. And you cannot see it, but and I and I can't see into it. But if he's standing, he he has to be standing in it. Mud. And typically, like yeah, in white people, there's one patch that is the closer the kalo is growing to the to the water stream. Like what, if you're getting more water, right? The kalo, the kalo grows bigger, yeah. Uh. So the closer you get to that that um that and the colder the water is, right. the better it is for the kalo, yeah. Right. There you go. Kind of cool picture. But this also gets you an idea if you're doing some collo sketches of the shape of the leaf. They truly are a, a heart shape. And the pico right in the center is right where it kind of comes when it goes out like that. And then you can see the vein or the, the inside of stem and then all of the, um, the veins that kind of shoot out that way. So cool picture. All right, let's go to the next slide. Our great grandpa Abe. Uh, water pipe bursted right under his uh, cactus, and it made the cactus so tall and huge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the colors are photobombing uncle. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we got to start. I hope you're not too hungry because this is what they call a luau plate. If you were to go to a luau, you probably would get served all of these foods. And um, let's start naming them. Somebody just call out. Halpia. Uh, uh, Halpia. Poi. Can, can uh, um, Steffi, if anyone has the, there you go, the arrow. Can you point to the Halpia for, okay. Halpia, what is it made out of? Coconut. coconut. It is coconut. Anyone know the Hawaiian word for coconut? Niu. And uh, yes. 
and halpia. How many of you like halpia? Raise your hand. You would eat the halpia. Yep. Me. Uh, yeah, I would eat that. Well, I'd eat a little bit, then I pass it on. Okay, next to the, oh, someone said poi. Where's the, my little arrow person? Right there. That's a very small bowl of poi. Most of us would like a little bit more than that. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. How many of you like poi? I see some hands going up. Give it a try. It's an acquired taste, but you gotta, you gotta have it. When you eat it, it goes in your body and your body says, ah, it's really good food. It's really good food. Okay. I'm so bad. I've never <laughs> had the two of them, the two things. I'm so okay. Bad. Okay. So maybe you can be making a list of things. Luau plate, you can make a list of these these foods and say, I might want to try that. Okay. Anybody else want to name something on the luau plate? It's a long <laughs> lao lao, somebody yelled out. Where's the lao lao at? Pointer person. There you go. Lao lao. Of course, that's where the kalo is. What's inside of a lao lao? Anybody want to yell that out? Go ahead. Oh, she said pua'a. Yes, yes. What else? You can put there's all kinds of stuff in. There could be uala in it. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Cordelia. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. There could be like fish and greens. Fish, yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, my husband goes salmon fishing and we put some salmon in it uh, or butterfish you can put butterfish in it I, I it's hard it's hard for me to find it here so we use salmon here up in the Pacific Northwest I like to put a piece of fat in there you can get it at the store it's just kind of white like oh it makes it so delicious I dig around and try to find that first yummy yummy okay what else is on the plate someone taco. call out is there a taco or like squid is it like yeah squid? yeah yeah right there yeah could be taco mixed with some shoyu and uh, i love that that's my favorite that's there so you go taco t-a-k-o squid cordelia what else do you see kalua pig kalua pig there you go right in the middle kalua pig can write that down k-a-l-u-a kalua pig on the luau plate Yep, I like that too. Nice and salty, yum, yum, yum. Oh, Hoku and Kamalani are raising their hand. Okay. Lomi salmon. Lomi salmon, where's that at? Yep, do you like lomi salmon? Yep, yeah. thumbs up. Go oh, Noi, just unmute yourself Noi. Is that chicken long rice? Yep. That is chicken long rice. My sister makes the best in the world. Let me tell you, she's, she's known for that, okay. So here is a typical luau plate. Some places you might have a couple of other things there for, for you to eat. Some people have kulolo, which is a, an, another great thing to eat. And sometimes a purple sweet potato is there. And I always try to grab that from anybody who doesn't want to eat it. So, um, so yeah, you can have anything. Sometimes they have a crab and they have other kinds of fish on the sides that you can eat with your luau plate so it's uh this is something that um i think we all kind of like and some of the restaurants around here you can get a luau plate or you can kind of combine things to make a luau plate okay all right you notice there's no rice on this one right this boy anyway i went to this restaurant uh no go ahead oh I was at the Ala Moana Center and I went to get a luau plate and the guy asked me, do you want rice or do you want poi? And I didn't, I just looked at him like, what? <laughs> I had a for luau plate without poi or rice. And I just said, brother, look at me, I'm Hawaiian, I want poi. I don't <laughs> and he just started to laugh. He said, well, I have to ask. So I didn't know that. All right. Another thing uh, that we have, uh, if you go to Hawaii, a, a favorite and a food that, uh, we kind of all identify with as something from Hawaii, and you can get it here, some on the mainland, is a plate lunch, correct? Everybody like plate lunches? Yes. Yeah, we got to have rice for a plate lunch. I agree with that. You can have poi, but rice is a great one with a plate lunch. And uh, these are some of the, uh, there's so many, can't put them all, 
but these are probably some of the uh, favorites. So the one on the left hand side, right there, what do you have to have to have a real plate lunch? Anybody want to call it out? You got to have a couple things for sure. Ah. Back salad. Uh, you got to have rice. Jackson Ohana said rice and mac, mac salad. You can ask for one scoop or two, two, scoops. two scoops. Or you can go someplace and say, I want the mini plate. Then the mini, you get one scoop of rice and one scoop of mac salad. So on this plate lunch on the left, what do you think the protein, the meat there is? Shoyu chicken. Could be shoyu chicken. I kind of thought it looked like teriyaki. So oh. it could be shoyu chicken, yeah. That was kalbi. It's kalbi? I don't know, but yeah, it's, I thought it was kalbi too. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Either way, it's delicious, right? <laughs> 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 so at the top with the egg, anybody know what this this, this specific dish here is called? Moko moko. Moko moko. Moko moko. Yes, rice, a hamburger patty, an egg on top, and what do they pour all over it? Gravy. 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 Some places make a good gravy, some don't. So you get your favorite place. So I'm just gonna uh, ask, have Steph, Auntie Steffi, and since I can't see everyone, uh, have two people that haven't talked to talk about their favorite place to go get a plate lunch. Well, here, we can stop share for a minute, Auntie. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Naomi, what is your favorite place to go get food? Plate lunches. Your lunch. Mm -hmm. Wherever her mom goes, probably her mom makes it. <laughs> yeah, my mom makes most of the food that we get. <laughs> your mom makes that food. <laughs> um, Is your dad there? Ask him where he likes to go. Is your dad at home? Is he there? He's in another meeting, but. Oh, he, um, all right, okay, okay. I don't so know, he really loves the food that my mom makes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, who else would, hasn't said anything at their favorite place? It doesn't have to be in Hawaii. It can be here. It can be here. Micah, you what about go you, get Micah? Lunch. Yeah, Micah, what about you, Micah? Don't to forget to unmute, Micah. Oh, he's thinking. Thinking. Anybody oh, else? Oh, While he's thinking, Keep those hands up. Oh, and then Naomi. Here, go, Micah, go, go. Uh, I would say come on a grill. Oh. Yes. Yes. Kazo, sorry, Kazo. Go ahead. Trey's Grinds. Mm. I've never been there. I hear it's really good. It is, I know. I, yeah. uh, I've heard the same. Uh, Naomi, did you have one? Did you end up having one, Naomi? I like Zippies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zippies in Hawaii, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I like their Terry Burger the best. Anyway, uh, okay. Oh, Kamani, go ahead, Kamani. Taste of Veda weight. Mm, oh, okay. Yeah. I mi I miss, miss them. them. We miss them. <laughs> we miss them so bad. Nicholas, where's your favorite place to get a plate lunch? Shiro's. Shiro's or Zippies. Mm, yeah. Zippies. Yeah. 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 Okay, Auntie Steffi, where's your pl favorite place? Um, it depends. <laughs> Where, what mood like, you're in? Like Zippy's, chili, like it's Zippy's chili or the rainbow slush float or like, you know, the sandwich places. Huh? Great lunch, look, rainbow slush float. <laughs> <laughs> the Poi Factory. Oh, why call it Poi Factory? Oh, yeah. Poi Factory. Mm. Yes. Well, they, but they have like luau food. They have like Hawaiian yeah. food. Hawaiian yeah, food. yeah, yeah, yeah. So great good. lunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, fr fresh catch, fresh catch. Oh, fresh catch for the poke. Yes. Okay, Nicholas, what you got? You know, you can get Zippy's chili here. Or not, like, from Zippy's, but like, they have it, like, frozen. Like, they ship. They have some things frozen you can get. Yeah, yeah I think it's out of Wajimaya, right? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they have it in the frozen aisle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It buys, like, two yeah. boxes of those when they come home. <laughs> yeah. What else? Well, for yeah. school. 
Okay. So anyway, it's sort of, uh, I saw a lot of you when you were looking at the food, you had smiles on your face, you're nodding your head, you really identify with this. It makes your tummy happy, it makes your family happy. Uh, our family, I go to l l here and we get a bunch of them. We like it one of this kind, this kind, and we lay it out and everyone just grabs what they want. So you can make your own, you can have a little bit of this and that. So I do like chicken katsu from l and &L. That's probably where I would get my chicken katsu. Okay. All right, let's go to the next slide. On to the next slide. Okay. So you had your plate lunch? Ah, everybody, oh, I see everyone, some people laughing. Ah, this isn't, uh-huh. Who wants to yell out what this is? Spam musa bees. Spam musa bees. Spam musa bees. How dare you yeah. torture us with this food? This is so Torture. <laughs> Well, there's, there's a, I, I, I found so many pictures of Spam Musubi, I had to get a couple, because uh, there's all kinds of Spam Musubi. Um, so you have the regular one where you have the rice and the Spam and a little, a little sliver of um, the, the nori on it. And then on the top, if you want it for breakfast or for lunch, this might even be some fried fish, looks like it might be in there, and then some coleslaw. But you can get a breakfast one with um, um, scrambled eggs and Spam and whatever. And look at those cute piggies, huh? There you go, Spam art. Somebody can do some Spam art. At, say, make some musubis and you want to cut up some, I don't know what they use for to make the piggy. You can make some spam musubi art. I thought that was a great way to, to, to have some little bit of fun with your food and eat it too. There you go. You can eat your art. All right. So anybody want to talk about spam musubi? If they just like a plain one, I just like it plain. But does I like anybody teriyaki. have it with the teriyaki? I cook mine in teriyaki. Too. Plain. Yeah. I like mine plain. Plain. Mm -hmm. I like just plain in teriyaki. But my mom makes really good teriyaki. Teriyaki, yes, yes. When you're hungry or when, like in Hawaii, if you go to the beach, you really eat it anyway, any kind. You know, teriyaki or no teriyaki, when you get hungry at the beach, everything tastes a little bit better when you're at the beach, right? Eat your, oh, I love it. Naomi says, eat your art out. Get it? Ha uh ha. -huh. Get it? Eat your the art out. The also mm -hmm. make a really good one with kimchi. They make spam and kimchi. So yeah, good. my mom. My mom always adds in some kimchi. Kimchi on the on the on your spam musubi. Yeah, everybody loves it when we sell them at the halal. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to try it. Save one for me next time, please. I've never tried that. Hey, Keenan. Has anyone? This is a, a good breakfast one. So good. It is a good breakfast one. And anybody know? The funny actually in Hawaii um, um, makes um, the best spam musubi. If someone, if anyone says, where do you go to get spam musubi in Hawaii? It's a really, they make some of the best. It's something you wouldn't expect. Or is it just me thinking about it? 7-Eleven. <laughs> 7-Eleven. Yeah. Go to the 7-Eleven. That's what I tell my friends. I go, where do you get good Spam Musubi? I said, go to 7-Eleven. They go, what? Try it. You, you might like it at the 7-Eleven. Who knows why? There must be a, a special Spam Musubi uh, ante at 7-Eleven that makes them or whatever. Don't know. So Spam Musubi, uh, uh, there, and, and there's a little bit. You can eat your art out, too. And you can eat it that way. Okay, next slide. Ah, treats. Now we have a little bit of, you know, we go from the luau plate, which is actually a pretty healthy plate. We go to plate lunch, me, uh, uh, uh. and then we go to the spam must be, and now we go to the treats, which actually is a great part of, yeah. So, Lo, why don't you call out what you know what these treats, some of these treats are? Uh, I like, I like when the ice, yeah, she buys with ice cream at the bottom. Mochi. Palasada. Oh, I love mochi, malasada, ice shave. ice shave, ice shave. What's on top of the one in the middle? What do you call that? 
when they pour something on the top? Syrup. Snow cap. <laughs> Snow cap it. it, right? You want a little snow cap? It's a they, it's a sweetened condensed milk that they pour on the top. It's it's quite amazing. Of course, they don't show you what's on the inside because you sometimes you can have the person put something inside of your shave ice before they actually put the ice on top. And some of you might like something else that goes inside. Anybody want to share what they like inside of their shave ice when they get it in, ice in cream. Hawaii? Here? Yes. Yeah, lihi muli or something. Okay, let's have people who haven't had a talk uh, at a malasada. Let's uh, let's go to the let's go to the people and see if they can share some of their favorite flavors of, of shave ice or ice shave. Chloe, do you have a favorite shave ice flavor? No, <laughs> I don't. I don't think I do. I like the okay. vanilla one, but I I like a lot of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I agree with you on that one too. Uh, let's see, Angelina, is there one um, that you like? Um, I like all of them, but yeah. I think I like cherry the most. Cherry, it's good, strong flavor. Haley, is there one you like? Uh, I like the green tea flavor from Snow Factory. I've never had that kind. I've never oh. had that kind. Liam, is there one you like? Are you there? Okay. Kina, is there one, a special flavor you like of shave ice? Oh, she says tiger's blood. All the colors you can find put oh. onto one. Is that what tiger's blood is? Oh no. <laughs> I think Kezo said tiger's blood. Oh, Kezo, you said, okay. Yeah, I don't know what that I, is. I meant to say tiger's blood. Okay. And Kina, all the flavors just kind of put it. That, that's expensive, Kina, if you have put a lot of flavors in. <laughs> you got to pay for every flavor. So, you know, uh, rainbow is a couple I didn't flavors. Know that. Lychee. I didn't know how to pay for all of them. Oh. Liam um, said Lihi Mui. Lihi Mui, yes. That people like Limui in there, Liam. Okay, so there's all kinds of flavors you can put in your shave ice. I don't, uh, I've never been to Waialua Shave Ice here. Is that pretty good? Because I've never been down there. Oh, yeah, real good. It's good. Okay, well, yeah. Maybe I ought to go there sometime soon or whatever. Okay, so there's the treats. Malasada, how many of you had Malasada? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just fried dough, right? Like a pancake and you fry it up. Yeah. Rub it in sugar. Delicious. It's delicious. So treats, treats, of course. If you think of the food pyramid, treats are at the top. We shouldn't be eating as much of them, but I, I know Auntie Steffi or anyone that goes to Hawaii, the first thing you want to do is grab your favorite treats immediately. Your favorite lunch. Oh, well, that's all I grab. eat. What's that? That's all I eat when I go there. Oh, treats? <laughs> yeah, I have like two shave ices a day. And I go, yep. yep. Yeah, I always have to go to favorite bakeries. Do your families have favorite bakeries they like to take you to when they go there? You want to call out some of the favorite bakeries? Paul, okay. Yep. Liliha Bakery. Yep. Liliha Bakery, yes. Paul, uh, okay. Yeah, Pala Akai definitely. Pala Akai is the one. Liha. I've never been that one. Where's oh, that one at? Uh, Pala is Akai is on Wailua. Yeah. Wailua is on It's the best, man. It puts For everybody else sure. to shame. If you haven't eaten Pala Akai, you haven't lived. Okay. All right. I'll have to try that. Yeah, I see uh, that. No delight. We used to go for cakes all the time. Delight baking. Yeah. Uh, it's no more. Uh, we always go to Kamehameha Bakery, not because of Kamehameha, but it used to, it was down the well, street where I street. lived. <laughs> the closest one. Yeah, so we used to go to, to Kamehameha Bakery too and, and eat all this stuff. So anyway, treats are good uh, to have and it kind of makes a full day of wonderful. You can feel like you're, you're uh, um, I don't know if the old ancestors, if they would come back and they would see all this, if they would like it because it wouldn't be to their taste. But I think if they took a bite here and there, they might really enjoy it. Don't you think the ancestors would like it too? Probably so. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Sorry, one minute. Let me pull it back up. 
I probably should have had this one before the treats, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh well, it's okay. But it, this is a great picture of all the, probably the healthier foods that I think, I hope that all of you try when you go there. And um, some of them look a little different. You might not know what they, some of them are. Some of them, I don't even know what some of them are. But um, uh, it's a kind of like a little uh, a, a tropical fruit tray, I guess you could call it. Um, everybody can see where the papaya is. Right up in, up in there. Yeah, that's the mango papayas up in the, I think in the right hand corner. There you go. That was probably the papaya. Uh, the, the the little red thing was oh lychee. Someone sees the lychee. There's the lychee. Uh huh. Oh, I really want lychee and mango stain. Uh huh. Is there a mango there? I think that's where everybody uh, the, yeah, wants lychee. <laughs> it makes my throat itchy. I don't I don't eat them very much. Uh, that makes my throat itchy. Um. Anyone see the star fruit? There's sure. star fruit there. What is that fruit like next to like the pomegranate? Like it's on the bottom. I forgot. My grandma used to have those all the time. I forgot what they're called. What do you what color is it? It's like it's um it's like right below like the pomegranate, if that is a pomegranate. It's next to like the um the pomegranate is right in the center. Is is it green? Yeah, it's green. It's it's a really darkish green, like a foresty green. Obviously, uh, I don't know all my, my fruits. Just I know, I'm trying to figure. Are you, are you talking about the one that looks like a flower? No. It, no, it looks hang, like, it's it has like a stem. It has a stem at the end. It has a stem, like an apple, but it looks like... This one? This one, yeah. That one. I have no idea what that is. That's like, my grandma used to grow those all the time. Like, they had like a tree. Really? And, yeah. Yeah. Well, probably because she was a green, green figure. Or... Hmm. There's a dragon fruit. Everyone knows about dragon fruit, they call it. That kind of pinky looking little, you know, that goes like that. Yep, that's don't eat, really don't good. Don't eat too much of it. Don't eat too much of it. Do they have lily okay. koi in here? Say that again. Do they have lily koi in here? I don't, I don't know what that is. Passion fruit. Lily koi. I'm sorry, I didn't. Okay. Is a lily koi? Let me see. I don't even know what a lily koi looks like. I don't see one. I don't see it in here. I don't I see it either. See a uh, there's a guava down at the bottom, lower left corner. It's kind of the long one. There's a guava there. So I do like guava flavor stuff, but I don't know. I think I've eaten a guava. It's a little different taste. And there's some, Kina says, I think I see a few coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> there's a yellow mango and then over to the left there's the red the reddish mango so hopefully you um you will uh, want to uh to be uh to do that and a lot of us that grew up in hawaii the mangoes would be coming off of the neighbor's tree and it would be really hard to get them you got to go get a big stick to kind of knock them down but that was part of the fun of um taking the neighbor's mangoes. That was a big deal, let me tell you. Anyway, okay, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so now one of the things for art, we're taking a look at cartoons. And a lot of you like to maybe take something and turn it into a little uh, human and give it a little person, human personality. And I saw some of these pictures when I was looking for sushi and they have little sushis there with eyes and noses on them and hats. And, and uh, so they're making little fluffy musubis and sushis. And that is something you can kind of sketch and you can make a mango and put a little face on it. Or you can make two mangoes with little stick legs walking around. So you can kind of play around with your sketches and you can make sort of cartoons. And there's a little spam musubi uh, sleeping there you with, with his little uh, naughty blankie. So uh, you can kind of make a fun fun way of taking some of the food, in this case sushi, and, and having some fun and adding some eyes and noses and legs and stuff and making it fun. Now we talked about one of the things we'd like for everybody to have at least some sort of a drawing, whether it's a pencil sketch or if you want to use crayon. In this case, these are two, uh, these are from an elementary school. And these are there in their art class. They were 
taking a look at the kala leaf and they were creating the shape of kala. You know, some of it is red and, and yellow, but it's the artist. They wanted to use a different color. And you can see that they have the little pico there and they use very strong black lines to make the, out, the outlining of the kalo. And then you can see the background. They were putting some different background to, to their kalo and they were using, um, anybody have any oil pastels at their house? It's kind of like um, oily chalky. And that, I think some of them use an oil pastel and then they would take a, a, a wash of watercolor and then they would wash over it to get that orange background. And like you see on the left hand side. And so they took their um, kalo, instead of trying to make it look realistic, they just made it ha have a, um, a different viewpoint and what they were thinking. So, you know, the person on the right probably likes the colors pink and purple and they wanted to work it into their artwork. The person on the left really likes shapes in the background. So it's however they feel they wanted to do their, their kalo drawing. So if uh, all of you can work on at least one kalo drawing, it can be pencil sketched out because you like to work on details. It can be a cartoon if you want to. It could be uh, anything with adding color to it. And I think it would be a very, um, I think it would be an excellent, excellent uh, uh, addition to the final art show or the art presentation that uh, that we can that, that we can have and, and some great pictures. So um, so anyway, so let's go to the last um, uh, slide. So what do you like eat and why? So Friday share. Remember for sketches and photos of your salad. Keep working on that salad recipe and uh, whatever. So let's get back to the, before we close my, my part of your day together. So, hmm, some of you just had lunch and you probably aren't thinking about dinner, but so what do you like eat right now? All of it. <laughs> Woo, it's a lot of money, <laughs> but I agree. It'd be great to have it all. So what, what do you call that when everybody brings all kinds, brings all of it together and you get together with people and everyone brings all these dishes? What do you call that? Anybody know? Go ahead and call it out. Potluck. Potluck. Yeah. When you go and have potluck with a bunch of Hawaiians, you know you're going to have some really great, great food. Uh, you're going to have some really different kinds of food, different desserts, different treats. You're going to have spamus be there. Uh, you're going to have all of that because that's, that's what we identify as, as a group of people. We identify with that and we bring, when we come together with Hawaiians, we bring what we identify with. So um, that food is very, very important. So all of you have your parents or they like to go and get their, their favorite dishes. Um, my son, who you saw that likes to throw cupcakes all in his mouth, right? Uh, we went. We went to. We went to Roxy's. Anybody been to Roxy's before? Okay, we went to Roxy's, and he wanted to get the the um, chicken teriyaki, a shoyu chicken, and he took one bite and he looked at me, and you know what he said to me? He said, "Mom, you make it better." Oh, what a good son! But he was right. <laughs> I almost had to go, I wanted to go in the back and say, okay, who made this? Did it, you need to do this, this, and this, because I really needed to doctor it up. And so actually he's never been back to Roxy's because, you know, he says, mom, you make it better. And I said, well, I make it different, but I agree. I made it a little bit better. So, uh, so what do you, what do you want to eat? Someone said all of them. Does everyone agree with that? Yeah, why not you want to eat? Okay, it might be something you might want to order this week. Say, so, okay, I'm, Auntie Louise showed us all this food and now I want to practice my identification to my culture and I want to have all this, this, this food now. And the kimchi, I have to think about the kimchi uh, musubi. Hmm, <laughs> I have to think about that. They're really <laughs> good. I bet they are. Now, I didn't include Korean I didn't include lot, I, just some Japanese food. I didn't include Filipino. That doesn't mean that, um, that that's not really wonderful food because I actually go to the Korean place immediately when I get, when I get home. That's where I go. So, um, 
but you know, everybody has the food that they identify with. And one day I hope we can all get together and have a potluck and everybody bring their favorite and it'll be fun to sample all, all of their, I'll bring, I'll bring my show you, my special show you chicken for you to try. So, um, so anyway, so with that, keep working on your sketches, have some fun with some yard art, go out and chalk up your driveway or uh, your sidewalk and, um, you know, have some fun with your drawings, have some fun with a column. You might want to, after you get off, immediately start sketching and planning what your final kalo leaf will be looking like and, um, and your, um, your recipe so we can kind of see what your salad is. Okay. All right. So Auntie Steffi, I'm, any questions in the chat before I go or?